So this is an odd one to make a breakdown for. The original video is mainly a compilation of existing footage that's set to music, but there are occasional sections that are wholly original and filmed entirely in Halo by me. I figured this would be a good place to get folks excited about machinima and how I bypass some of the game's limitations to do some wild stuff, and we will get to that. First up is the Blue Team roster segment, which actually took me 8 whole days to finish. I went into Halo 1 and I shot an ensemble, which at the time I only had two controllers for, and one I had to use for the cameraman, so I had to do some split screening and recoloring of the character's armor to match the colors that I needed. Then I took a screenshot of this clip and I layered it in as a transparent image in my screen recorder. I was using OBS here, so that in future recordings I could just line up the characters the best I could with that initial ensemble image. This process did become easier as time went on because I did manage to secure two more controllers, big thanks Thanks to my brother for that, but even then by the end of this section I was feeling pretty burned out. Recoloring and split screening was a big thing that I had to keep coming back to. At the end of the purple sequence near the end, there's that huge ensemble shot. Way too many characters for just four controllers, so they were captured in sets of two and then stitched together. They were all originally purple in filming, but for the little flashes I did change their colors individually in post. Moving on to one of my favorite bits in the video would be the meta's body count shot. I filmed the meta on the Halo 3 map Guardian, which makes for a great green screen. I used this method a few times throughout the video. The bodies are all individual shots I took on the map, the pit, against the yellow wall, of me killing a bunch of folks and hoping that they died in camera. That did not always happen, so this took a long time. And then I did a difference map, which is just, I removed the background, basically. And I laid them all in, one at a time, to match the music. Now. The villains section is interesting, because I had the idea early on to do a sort of ongoing camera move between shots, just a pullback, which in theory should have been simple to do in the game, but I didn't consider elements from the show that were not specific to the game. You know, characters that appear on screens, like the counselor, or Vic, or fully animated characters like the chairman, or the insurrectionist soldiers who there are no identical armor permutations for in the game. And on top of all that, there were some ensemble shots that would probably require another split screen, but this time the shot would be moving. <sighs> so. 3D tracking solved at least 25% of this. Counselor and Vic were pretty seamlessly attached to the wall and floor, and I suppose a lot of that is due to the decent frame rate of the game footage. It also prepared me for the chairman shot, the Lopez's head shot, and the insurrectionist shot. But those shots had a lot more to figure out. For the chairman shot, I was lucky enough to find a moment in a scene from season 13 where his full body is shown and he sort of dramatically turns his head. I auto-rotoscoped him, which should be easy, but I ended up touching it up frame by frame anyway and it took like two hours. Hours. Then I laid him into the 3D tracked footage and voila, chairman shot. Now, for ensemble shots, this felt like it was going to be impossible, but I found something that works, though it was kind of a nerve wracking process. I had the cameraman crouch and sort of crawl backwards, and I found that as long as I went exactly straight forward and exactly straight back, I could mirror the movement identically between each take, sort of like a motion control rig. So I would get one take, reset the camera, move the actors, and get the next take. Then I just had to animate a mass split screen around the actors to move back with them, and I could do big ensemble shots, so long as I remembered not to place anyone too close to each other to avoid overlapping, which I did. Lopez's head was just a still image of one of the actors that I took up close and then I 3D tracked it to the middle of the shot. The insurrectionist shot was a pain in my soul. Like I said before, a good chunk of the armor parts on these characters do not exist in Halo because these were primarily animated characters, so I did each one up as close as I could get them, filmed them in front of a flat background so that I could difference map them, and then went into the show and screenshotted bits and pieces of the characters to use image assets from their armor, which I would then motion track onto the filmed bodies, and then I laid them into the 3D track shot. That one took hours. Just as a quick honorable mention here, the opening portion of the Music of Chorus section is a shot-for-shot -shot remake of a live-action fan video I made for a Red vs. Blue contest in 2015. It involved a lot of green screening and Halo 4 to match everything up as identically as I could. And finally, we have the Monty Ohm tribute. I went into this section completely blind, I just picked action scenes on a whim and I did my best to recreate what I could and 
As you could have guessed, Halo is a very limited engine to make convincing action in. You can walk, you can melee with your weapon, you can jump, crouch, fire your gun, reload, and throw a grenade. The grenade throw animation specifically really provided a huge thrust for the action in this sequence. I would have a character throw a grenade, and then in post I would replace the grenade with some other element. Maybe the character is throwing a knife, or a gun to a partner, or a whole teleporter, or a car. All things you can't do in Halo, but with the help of some masks and some time, look pretty convincing. I also think I made pretty effective use of Halo 3's theater mode, specifically the ability it gives me to slow down in-game footage by simply applying slight pressure to the controller's right trigger. I would take clips at normal speed and in slow motion, and I would combine the two at right moments to create that classic action slow-mo effect. All those floating objects in the anti-gravity shot were just objects that I was moving in forge mode in Halo 3. I just masked each one out until the frame was cluttered with moving junk. The paintball sequence was fun. Admittedly, I did cheat for this one by borrowing an asset that Monty did actually make, and that would be the foamy paint texture. The scene is generally just recoloring muzzle flashes to be pink, and imposing an image of the foam directly from the show to the characters. I also freeze frame the characters during their motion to mimic the sensation of their armor locking up, which is what the paint does in the original scene. For that final sequence where Maine flips the car, my biggest worry was all of it. You can't hit a player with a car without either pushing him off camera or killing him instantly. Observe. So for the impact shot, I set a fixed barrel down in forge mode. Fixed being a physics mode that enables the object to be completely immovable by anything. No matter what you do to that barrel, it will not budge, which is great for- so, I shot the car being stopped by the barrel, shot a separate clip of main crouching where the barrel was, and I used another difference mat to fuse the shots together. This shot required a lot of cleanup, but eventually I settled on something that I really liked. Now, for that final shot, you already know that the arm movement is a grenade throw animation. In fact, I added to this by making the character standing from a crouch position as he threw the grenade to give it a kind of push feel. The jeep itself flipping required a few things. One, in the game settings, everyone is unkillable, cannot die. And two, all vehicles on the map are set to indestructible. And both of these things are essential because a rocket launcher is the only thing that will make a car flip like that. Those first few frames of the Warthog being thrown from Main's hand are actually a still image of the car that I just keyframed into position of the actual flip. The slow motion is just as I mentioned before, actual in-engine slow-mo in theater mode. Oh, and that lens flare was also me. This project took a month to make, several hours of work a day, and hopefully now you can see why that is. Thank you all so much for watching.